Sufyan, and thank you so much for being with us. Sufyan, I'm sorry, we can't, the online participants can't hear you. So there has to be a problem uh, with the sound system in the hall. So kindly put the sound system on. Who is in charge of the sound system? I'm not the IT people to do that. Is it, am I audible now? No, you are very, your voice is cracking up and it's not clear. Previously, we could not hear anything. Please Are check again. The voice is not clear. Hello. 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 Gohar say something so I know if the voice carries well. Really? G. Can you hear us now clearly? Yeah. Yes, it's much better. Whoever is at the sound. Tell him to uh, be careful. Is it okay now? I'm just doing the mic. Yeah, thank you so much. Right, no okay, problem. yes, it's audible. Please back to Sufyan. We have wasted enough time. We have, we are required by the <clears throat> Board of Governors to follow the minimum HEC criteria. That is the minimum criteria or minimum eligibility criteria. That does not mean that if you are eligible, you would be promoted. For that, there are certain other things. The HEC criteria for all university employees, other than four areas, which are mentioned here. That is for engineering, law, studio arts, and medical. Earlier, computer till 2019 was also included in this, that people without a PhD could be promoted to assistant professors. But in the latest incarnation, HEC has taken that out. And therefore, even in computer science, they expect that the promotions and appointments would be for only PhDs. These are allowed because Medical Council, Engineering Council, and the Pakistan Bar Council govern the ranks in that. The studio arts, of course, is people who are working art and design, painting, dancing, creative writing. These, because are terminal degrees at the MS level, therefore they have a separate criteria which is used. First appointment, you have to have either a foreign master's degree or an MS MPhil from a Pakistan, Pakistani university or equivalent qualifications recognized by the HEC. Therefore, promotions, which I'm going to be looking at are to the post of associate professor and to the post of professor. So to become an associate professor, there were there are two requirements: ten years of ex experience, and for professor, fifteen years of experience. Earlier in the document, it is stated four years have to be mandatory post PhD, and for professor, eight years post PhD. However, 
HEC has relaxed this till March 2023. Therefore, in this promotion cycle, people who do not have mandatory eight years post-PhD for professor or four years post-PhD for associate professor are also eligible to apply. Does it make some sense? The yes, yeah. For an associate professor, 10 research publications are required of which at least four publications have to be in the last five years in ATC recognized journals. If our professor, 15 research publications with at least five in the last five years in ATC recognized journals. ATC does give weightage to book chapters and related publications in a compilation, but it does not give any credit if it's a translation or if you are editing a book. So you might be the editor of the book, you would not get credit, but if you have published a chapter in that book, it is the credit. And the publishers have to be recognized and on the ATC list. So, mandate which you received from the Board of Governors said non PhDs are given first appointment. No, they are not promoted to the rank of assistant, associate, or full professors. Unfortunately, they have blocked this passage to the faculty. I am sorry, Sufyan, again, the voice is breaking up and we can't hear you. And there are some 41 participants online. It's very poor reception at, in the room. I can't help it. I know, Sufyan, it's not your problem. It's the person sitting at the sound. Can you hear me? It's Maybe. not a problem at your end. I'm sorry, Sufyan. Somehow the sound people are not able to manage it. Ma'am, the sound is okay. Maybe it's the internet. We can't hear you, Sufyan. Hello? Hanji, voice me. There's too much crackle in your voice. Hello? No, it's still not okay. Hello, can you hear me now? No, the crackle is still there. Hello. Yeah. The sound um, is Please give us some time. No, uh, I am sorry. The still, it's not good. Uh, you'll have to stick to the laptop uh, if, but you will not be able to address the in-person audience. I think the the sound system have to manage it somehow. And why this is so, I fail to understand. Bole, uh, Sufyan. Hello, can you hear me now? No, the crackle is not going away. Hello. Ab bolna shuru kare, Sufyan. Let's see. Be able to do that. Link me, Java. Ha, ab kuch better hai. Gohar, please start. All right. Can you hear me now? Ji, much better. Much better. Okay. Sorry, Sufyan. Thanks. Of course, our lecturer, assistant professor, associate, professor. Now, 
the whenever you fill in an application form, these are reviewed by the chair and dean of, and then the academic standards committee. So you are advised to have a consultation with the chair and dean before you submit the portfolio. The requirement for eight years, like I said, of post PhD experience for professors and four years for associate professor has been relaxed in March 23. Therefore, this promotion cycle, that mandatory requirement of eight years post, post PhD or four years post PhD for associates is, no, is not there. Now, the criteria for promotion. You are examined in this criteria, effectiveness in teaching, evidence, and you have to provide evidence that you have undertaken specific steps during the last year or during your period, what you have done, what conferences you attended, what CLT school lectures you have attended, and somebody else will come to that in a minute. Meetings of research and scholarly activity, quality of advising and other interactions with students outside the classroom, and service to college and wider community outside college. Now, university people, or other than professors, the processes, application, single video format is sent to the chair of the chair of department. The department chair announces his or her comments and forwards it to the dean, and the dean forwards it to the vice rector's office. For professors, there is an additional step. Chair, department, vice rector office, and the vice rector then sends the evaluation outside to the list which is maintained by the registrar and the vice rector office, and these are the experts in that field. And once the report comes in, it also asks the assessment research office, which is now QVC, to give their input, which is technically your scores and other information that you might have in the QEC. And then it comes to the Academic Standards Committee for Education. Now, the Academic Standards Committee is formulated as per the FC College Charter. And the Academic Standards Committee functions to review the performance of each faculty member and make recommendations to the rector regarding promotion rank or continued service of the faculty member. So the Academic Standards Committee, that committee has the mandate either to recommend for promotion, not recommend for promotion, or even recommend that this faculty member is relevant from the kind of effectiveness of the faculty member not because the department does not need that. That is an administrative decision that when you are talking with the department and reason the department, the academic standard committee does not look at that. The academic standards committee consists of a vice rector, who's ex official, the chair of the committee. The rest of the members, one senior faculty member, either a professor or an associate professor, and each faculty is invited to be part of the member. The Academic Standards Committee can also ask other experts, uh, experts to attend as non-voting members and give their input when required. Do understand that in certain cases, the Academic Standards Committee, just like in professors, you ask for an external input, you might rather also ask for an internal input, external input. When I say we, this is something which, in my incarnation, this is what the process followed. The membership of the Academic Standards Committee is, for obvious reasons, kept confidential. And so are we, also the 
discussions on the academic standards committee only in the next part is close to. The program of the meeting of standard committee shall be one half of the members. A faction encountered in one, the class of the same members. So that means the four members that is half, and the three members that is not half. Now, what should the petition include? When you are submitting a petition for the motion, it should include the updated CV containing qualifications, a numbered list of publications, not limited, numbered, so that you can see you have 7, 11, 15, 20, but these should be, I'll come to that right now, papers, books, chapters, etc., both at FCC or elsewhere. But I'm not really looking at what you did at the Farm Christian College, but because in the publications it might be right while you were doing PhD or while you were doing an employment elsewhere. So all publications are counted. Is, there is no time limit on when that publication was published. You can't say that, okay, this publication was earlier than 2000, so it is not been counted. It would be counted. <clears throat> Note that a proper citation is required and the spelling of the journal should match the ATC journal recognition system. So do not expect the members of the team, not necessarily the actual academic experience committee, but the people who are interested with checking these out and the name and then say no, it is the general office of the general and physics. So the spelling has to be correct as reflected in the HEC general recognition system. Now, HEC general recognition system, please do understand that it doesn't contain journals before 2019. Because that list is available in the HEC. These are recognized journals before 2017, sorry, 2017 and before. So you have to just take an extract from that and add it. Second, a statement citing the evidence listing contribution addressing the areas of which are listed in your promotion performer criteria one, criteria two, criteria three. It is there. Documentary evidence in support of the above appropriately arranged. So, do you have any publication? Some publications will be together. These are publications, these are chapters, these are whatever. Now, the first chapter of the book or the publication is required. It will be attached to it. That just makes because we can always look at the book. Pick it out on the on Google and see whether the book is there or not. And the book lists the person as an author of the chapter or not, or perhaps it's a book. You are a sole author of the book. That, of course, is counted as a publication. And you can find a petition with HSC. And which is you can give you that this book is the title so we will count it as two publications. If you have a print. A patent is sometimes counted as five publications, but it has to be applied to, to the HEC, and they are the ones who say should it be counted or should it not be counted. As this is the interview, you have something certain application So it should be such a Statements or evidence in such a way that it should be understandable. Do not expect that the committee is actually going to understand what you have stated. I have done 
Now, this, this is the sample criteria and the percentage of the weightage in each criteria. Teaching effectiveness. What comes under teaching effectiveness? Self evaluation, student evaluation, heads, chairs, and the deans. I won't say HOD now. These are chairs. Okay, chairs, your course syllabus, because we expect all of the course syllabus to be added. Quizzes, tests, written final exam samples. And these should contain assignments that will not, it's not hot, it's warm, it's higher order thinking. Which means higher order thinking, or when you look at news or Leaving taxonomy, it says this is knowledge based, this is record, and these are higher order thinking, which analysis, critique, other higher order thinking. Variety of teaching methodologies used. You use lecture, you use PowerPoint, you use OP, you use some other. Methods engage the students. And again, evidence has to be provided. Knowledge integration, meeting classes regularly implemented, teaching large classes that only is in two departments. We have the regular departments and the students each. And group distributions. HEC and FC College says that you should have a normal curve for distribution. It does not mean that you have to fix to the curve. But if 10 students are getting A's, it should be 10 students getting B's. So as to give you a bell curve. It is not that, of course, we do understand whatever this class is greater than. Or 20, then a normal distribution works. But what if you have only two students? Then a normal distribution does not work, and you have to have an absolute grade. Now, efforts to improve advising, student interaction. When you say classroom visits, have you invited some other faculty member to come and visit your classroom and give you feedback? CLT has resource persons. You can ask CLT to send someone over to observe your classroom and see whether what type of feedback you got. You should have mentoring younger faculty. Younger faculty of my age, you have to mentor me. So, mentoring. Training sessions in teaching, training session advising, participation in learning groups, articulate and I participate in ID exchange. There are certain groups available throughout the university which do these things. And you can be part of this group in the words in which the community about your perspective and learn about the perspective. For example, I'm a person of natural sciences. I can go to the person of the humanities and see how we approach a certain problem, how I approach a certain problem. For natural sciences, computers, and IT, it is more a logical approach because we have an impulse and our thinking is easily understood. But how do you understand marking of let's say an English paper when the person has done a thinking of my own. So getting ideas, being in different meetings, conferences, you do get feedback, but I am screening from the parent. Whether you're advisor, etc. 
scholarly activity, keeping up to date, all of these things. It doesn't mean you have to read them. These are the things that count. Community memberships, work with NGOs, etc. Paper set up with other universities, examine with other universities. You are invited to examine an MPhil or a PhD thesis that is a service. This was earlier also part of the assessment, but now it is still there. The only requirement is that you should have clear VAT in an acceptable manner. And then, other than languages, you should teach in English. Now, how is annual evaluation different? Any questions about promotion? Uh, you do not have to provide evidence for all components. Whatever you have, for example, components in advising, go to the advising center and do your students as an advisor because quite a few of you have taught Uni 100. You have taught a class, you have been assigned students by the faculty, by the department, and they would have the scores available. And we can share that. There are ways and means to do that. Now, these are again five areas. Again, documentary evidence is required. However, if your contract is up for renewal, then you have to use evidence over the whole period. Let's say you have a three-year contract and it is up for renewal, then please use evidence over the three-year contract. So if you have published in the last three years, all the publications would be there, class course would be there, it's tedious, but you just have to pull them out from last year's reports and add them there. Now, the difference between promotion and assessment is that here you have and the beats before input, and you are required to see that performer that you agree or disagree with what the header said. So, Please do not sign unless you want to the evaluation or discuss the evaluation with him or her. Now, again, self-evaluation, professional goals, single file with the attachments go to the department chair, dean of faculty, and to the vice rector's office. This is the timeline. In the agenda, this was supposed to be the first slide, but having already made the PowerPoint. So, January 6th is the cutoff date for both promotions as well as evaluations. So, for promotions, January 6th, uh, sorry, January 6th is the notice to intend to apply for promotions. You have to tell the vice rector, associate vice rector for academic affairs that you intend to apply for promotion. The reason being behind this being that then the vice rector office follows up with the head and the dean that we have not received, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. January 20th, the promotion applications are due. So, 6th of January, over the holidays, bring over it. Whether you do have the eligibility and you meet the four criteria or five criteria of promotion, the vice rector's email has given you all the materials. And this timeline is available in the same daily bus. This, of course, doesn't concern you. Probably it's an application to the dean. Probably 17th, they are sent back to the vice rector office. And 17th February, the academic service committee starts its meetings.
I would recommend that you just open a document. Let's say your self assessment report. And you can that copy paste and use the word a word program in the PDF. That PDF becomes searchable. So I can just type migration journal physics and it will be placement of that rules and I can see yes this is the and the evidence is provided at this place. So when you are embedding the PDF that I do so that just makes life easier for the person who is rather than putting in the HEC research and it's not there. You have given a citation so that you are not disadvantaged in this. Thank you. Are there any questions? Are there any comments? I would request uh, to please uh, raise your hand. And uh, after that, you can ask your questions or any comments, please, after that. Um, so I have a question regarding annual evaluation. So mm -hmm. for the faculty members who've just joined in fall 2022. The faculty members who have just joined in fall, you have been given a one-year contract. Mm -hmm. And the first year is a probation. Yes. So your grades would not have been the semester ends on 23rd. Yes. And our timeline is already one. All right. So you should have the evaluation of our grades. All right. This will be provided to us by QC at a later date. Or when we will be in power. Mm -hmm. Just send it. And if you're visiting before and then you've uh, uh, count. Already. Mm -hmm. okay. But visiting can count in promotion. All right. It doesn't count in evaluation. Okay. The annual evaluation is from the day of this contract. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. I want to ask that if uh, we file a petition for promotion, and what if it is rejected by the committee? So either they will tell us why the reasons of rejection. Uh, One question. You can ask for the reasons of rejection. Sometimes people tend to think that because you get an extended committee starts working on 17th of February, that perhaps is the cut off date. That's why the reason in this service it is stated that experience communications. If you have an acceptance letter and you can afford that vote, if the acceptance letter is due even on 2nd of June, January, we sorry. It will not be counted. Second question is if the uh, the person is not agree with the decision, so he or she can file the appeal? Yes, there is an appeal. You can first file an appeal with the building. Yes, sir. The associate vice rector, he or she, or the vice rector will respond to you, giving you reasons why you were deficient. Thank you very much. Uh, 
thank you, Ramesh. I just want to ask that there is a you know that there's a breakup like forty five percent teaching and twenty and twenty percent. Uh -huh. So what is the minimum criteria? For example, uh, do you set some benchmark? We didn't set a start the evaluation set the benchmark. In in case of promotion, it was decided to go back when we got on course time that we will not deny promotion just because we have too many professors up there. We will not be deny on the basis because being the private university, in the private university, which is the commands, and and lecturers. And by associates in 25. This is the person is eligible to become the evidence from said Okay, thank you. And about the community service, this means you said that the uh, which is outside of the FCC. Community service, that is why you need to what is counted. It is academic, mostly. It can also be other than that in the page in the school program. Okay. And you have evidence to provide for that. Okay, thank you. Sufyan, there was a question about uh, what about arts and design uh, for art and design criteria for promotion? The criteria is given on the HEC website. I specifically did not bring it up here because we have one person in arts and design. And that is Sophia Zeti. Yes. And uh, that has a particular HEC requirement. But how many observations or how many shows they have had over the past so many years, and then they can be considered. The requirement is there. If the, the, the person who wants this needs it, I can send the HEC requirement. For example, writers, if they have so many published books, presentations, points, so there are special HEC criteria in order to look at them for now just for information in the university in fact two universities which do not follow the HEC criteria and in the 2020 PhD policy there is a resentment from universities that what to do about people who are going to become professors of practice about people who are doing clinical work, people are doing other type of work which doesn't is non-academic in nature. And that is what the job description is. So whether you see a that or not is something we have to look at. Because in medical doctors, even without PhD, you can become professors of medicine. Uh, Sufyan, we could not, uh, if you could miss, you know, share the HEC criteria link or something, though I think I'm sure we can go to the HEC website and check that up as well. Uh, a lot of what you say is not very audible to the online participants. So if you could add a slide or add a footnote to a slide that the criteria for arts and design is as per the HEC link so and so. I think that would be helpful in your PowerPoint. Uh, yes. And another, so Abid Naim wants to ask a question, one of the online participants. So please, Abid Naim, can you unmute and speak up? Abhinay? Um, I want to know that about uh, the conferences, which are uh, HEC approved conferences, would they be counted as uh, 
communication uh, Sufyan, your voice is totally broken down. We can't hear you. I'm so sorry for this equipment and arrangement. Uh, we just can't hear a word. Yes, yes, a bit better, choppy, but better. Gohar, dusra mic de jo apne floor pe dete hai, mic that is better. This mic is not working. This was still changed. No. Sufyan, there's something wrong with you. This mic works. It is my, it is my wrong as I understand that. <laughs> yeah, it's still choppy, but Abed name, let's see if we can make some sense out of the sound. Nice. I am sorry we can't hear you, Sufyan. I'm so apologize for this bad equipment. It's not your fault. It's not your fault somehow. I think it's something is not working. So Any questions from the in-person participants? Sure. Thank you so much, Dr. Oh, oh, I can't in person. Um, it was very clear. There are just few questions which I think um I just need to kind of be double sure about them. Question number one is um you mentioned the journals, uh HEC recognized journals like AJRS. AJRS, yes. But what about the publication houses for the books? Publication houses for books are listed also on HEC's website and we recognize them, which are so national as well as international. It is available on HEC website? Uh, it was available. I haven't checked it lately. I tried to check and I could not find it. Recognize once. Uh, my second question is um, which citation style would be preferred when we are listening? We don't need RPC, APC, or whatever style that is not good at the moment because we are the first stage of the publication as the mm -hmm. We just have to list publication, year of publication, and a link to that. Link to the publication. Link to the publication. Not link. You just say the publication is in your CV. All right. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And you can also add uh, the screenshot from the HEC OJR. OJR screenshot as well. Screen just screenshot just helps a lot because ISS number is there. All right. Thank you so much. Thank you. Sir, does FCC count uh, previous teaching experience for promotion? Yes, it does. Okay. Now, teaching has to be in a higher education institution recognized by the HEC. If you have taught in a school or at the college level, that is not counted. It is not higher education institution. So it would be countable for college faculty members? The college, like I would say, college faculty has a open Okay. Uh, we are talking about the university and that's where HEC comes in. Okay. HEC university comes under the mandate of higher education commission, whereas college comes under the mandate of intermediate and secondary education. Any person participants are requested to please. Uh, do the polling survey. So I'll circulate the sheet and please pass this around. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Zara. Thank you so much.
Sufyan, thank you so much. I think it was very a uh, good session, but unfortunately the technology did not, you know, we couldn't hear or we couldn't see you properly. Mm -hmm. So somehow the so these things need to be synchronized better at the events and the IT, you know, both of them say it is the sound problem. The sound people say it is the IT problem. So I do not know whose problem it is in the end, except ours. Uh, please polling ko complete kar lijiye. online participants. May I request you to, uh, there are 23 of you and only 17 of you have responded. Please respond to the poll. You are happy. I am happy if you write dissatisfied because of the. Yeah, we will send you the recording if it works well. If it does not, we'll rely on the slides. I just wanted to make one point clear. The classroom observation for new faculty is still not current and is not being offered. We should be able to offer it within a year. So <laughs> Thank you so much for saying this. <laughs> <laughs>